Hi everyone, this is Mr. West. Today we took a request from Scotty who left a comment and said, could you do a pre-calc law of cosines and CUDA worksheet? And so that's what we're doing today. Hopefully Scotty, you find this helpful and thanks so much for commenting. Okay, law of cosines, quick overview. Uh, if we have a triangle here, A, B, C, it's uh, angles are big A, big C, and big B. And uh, we have it, the important thing about this is that A and little a, angle A is the big A, are opposite of each other. So here we have little a and then big A, and then we have it here in the triangle demonstrated there. That's the important thing. Now, this does not have to be like, if you have a triangle that's labeled R, S, T, I mean, this can just represent anything. The important thing is that your given angle is that cosine component and its opposite side is by itself on the equal sign. That's why you can rearrange the law of cosines for any of the other sides, B or C by itself. The important thing is notice how with the B, it's sine of B, or sorry, <laughs> I don't know why I would write sine of B, it's the law of cosines. But notice how it's cosine, I know that's fat, cosine, um, so the co C squared by itself, cosine of C. B squared by itself, cosine of B, that's the important thing. So let's go ahead and jump right into number one. It says find RT. Notice here that this is like two sides in between an angle. And we're just gonna call this angle A instead because we want this relationship and the side we're looking for is opposite of angle A, so that works out perfectly for our law of cosines. So A squared is by itself. This side, we're actually gonna call, we're gonna call this B, and we're gonna call this guy C, this 15C. So we have 23, and if you look up here, this is what I'm just referencing, 23 squared plus 15 squared minus two times 23 times 15 times cosine of 27. And that's all there is to it. From here, it's algebra. Just some quick tips on the algebra. A lot of students, but I'd say 90%, can get the formula okay. Um, you know, some still struggle with it, but get the formula okay. But then they screw up this part because they did forget to do order of operations. They'll like do 15 squared minus. Well, let me show you. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it step by step. Once you get good at this, no problem doing it in your head or doing it straight from the calculator. But I highly recommend writing it out first. And then if you have sufficient uh, algebra skills, then I, you know, I might consider just going right from the calculator. Five, 15 squared, 225, minus two times 23 times 15. And I'm just punching this into the calculator times cosine 27. That's cosine 27, this is in degrees. A lot of times your pre-calc assignments are gonna be in radians, but this one's degrees. 891 and it's two zeros after that so I'm just rounding 891 but I'm going to keep it stored in my calculator. Again, the mistake I normally see from here is I see people multi uh sorry, not multiply that. That's what you're supposed to do, multiply this first, but I see them instead do 225 minus 690. Okay, that's a mistake. You don't want to do that. Make sure you finish off the PEMDAS order of operations, multiply those two first. And again, I'm going straight from my stored number on my calculator for cosine 27. I like doing that first. And then uh, I'm actually round this to near 10th, just on the screen, but know that I'm having it stored on my calculator. And I'm going to, um, uh, I have it stored on my calculator. And I'm just going to multiply that by, uh, sorry, subtract that from 225. So I have, uh, I did, already did the subtraction. Now I have to add by 29. I just essentially add straight across. And I got 139.2. 2054. Again, I have that stored. That's equal to a squared. And then you take the square root, which I like just raising to the 0.5 power of my calculator. I think it's faster. And it's the same thing. And I get a equals 11.8. So that's how you use the law of cosines when you're looking for the opposite side of a and you're given a side, an angle in between, and a side. Uh, notice how two is the same way, three is the same way, four is the same way, okay, so they're all the same. Well, I wanna jump actually ahead to number eight. With number eight, you'll notice that we don't have side angle side, instead we're looking for measure of angle H. So let's go ahead and highlight H, and we're not gonna call it H, we're gonna call it 
angle A. So we're gonna cross that out and we're gonna call it angle A. That would make this letter A, that would make this uh, letter B, and that would make it letter C. Again, the B and C are interchangeable. Now we have 22 squared, and actually there's some formulas that show uh, cosine of A and then it's by itself. I just, I think that's too much to memorize, so I just rearrange. So this is B squared, 28 squared, plus 26 squared, minus two times 28, times 26, times cosine of A. Now, notice how what we're solving for has changed. Now we're solving for the angle, so we're trying to get this by itself, and we're gonna rearrange everything else. This is gonna require a lot of computation. I'm gonna do it quickly on my calculator. Okay, I'm not gonna show every step. I'm gonna show this one, 484. I'm gonna actually add 28 squared plus 26 squared right away, and I get 1460 minus, and then two times 28 times 26. Okay, and so I get minus 1456 times, and I'll put this in a different color because we have to take care of it later, cosine of A. Another mistake I see is people, again, at, uh, subtract those, but you can't. What we need to do first is we are gonna have to subtract 1460 from both sides. If you don't like that cosine there, just put a big X and pretend it's a two-step equation, okay? That's all it is. So don't, don't be afraid of, uh, of that. We're gonna subtract 1460 from both sides. Okay, and I get negative, I'm switching colors here. Uh, nope, go back to purple. So I get negative 972 equals negative 1456 times, I'll keep this the same color, cosine of A. Okay, I'm gonna switch colors here. Too much purple on my screen. Now, this is attached through multiplication, so we need to divide. So we're gonna divide both sides by negative 1456. Negative 1456. So I'm gonna divide by 1456. It's gonna become positive, keep that in mind. And I get 0 0.6675. I get, it's more decimal places. I'm keeping it stored in my calculator, but this is equal to cosine of A. What do I do from here? The final step, you're gonna do is you're gonna be taking the inverse cosine of both sides because the, how to undo a cosine is an in inverse cosine, just like the opposite of this multiplication right here was division, okay? Opposite of cosining something, inverse cosine it. So I'm gonna do the inverse cosine and I already have that number stored in my calculator. I'm just gonna select it and I get that uh, angle A, now that I have the cosine canceled away, angle A or A equals 48.1 uh, degree. I'm around to the nearest tenth. I think that's what it wants. So this is 48.1, if I can write a one, degrees. So that's how you do it when you're given three sides. Now we're going to go to another situation here, problem six. Why is this one different? Problem six is different because it gives us uh, stuff that we don't, we have, we're missing too many things. So if we call this, we're looking for angle S, okay? Notice how there's only one angle in law of cosine, so we're gonna have to call this our angle A. And if we call that angle A, well guess what? Now we're missing our side C. We're missing angle A, we're missing side C, that's two things we're missing. So we will not be able to do this in one swoop of the law of cosines. That's why I have law of sines here. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to call this angle A, this B, this C, and I'm gonna have to find side A first. So side A squared equals, oh boy, I can see this is just a lot of work. This is what I don't like about law of cosines, minus two times 24 times 14 times cosine of, uh, what am I taking the cosine of? 118. Okay, now it's just algebra at this point, 24 squared. Again, this is what I'm saying. Make sure you start getting good at um, just crunching these numbers. So I had 772 minus, and then two times 24 times 14 times, I'm just gonna multiply times cosine 118 right away. Okay, and all this gives me, ooh, cosine of negative 118 is negative, so that's a negative three, 15.4848. I'm just gonna leave it like that. Okay, cosine 118, just double check. Okay, good. Uh, okay, 
sorry, uh, just doing some thinking. A squared, and then we have uh, 772, it's minus a negative, so that's plus, uh, and actually I'm gonna keep it minus because it was already minus in my calculator, but uh, I get A squared equals 1087.48. And I'm going to take the square root of that. I raise it to the 0.5 power. And I get A equals 32.977. 32.977. Well, guess what? Now we can use, we can do this whole thing again. And instead of calling that A, we can call S angle A. And then this would become B. And this would become C still. Okay, so you can see we can we could redo the entire cosine if we wanted to. Law of cosines is what I mean. Instead, I think the easier thing to do here is to use the law of cosines. The law of cosines, sorry, the law of sines. The law of sines states that the sine of A, so if we have the same relationship here, and then we have C, sorry, my, uh, oops, I got that backwards. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but... The main thing I want to show you is if we have sine of A over, let me just go ahead and write the B here, sine of B over B is going to be equal to sine of A over A is equal to the sine of C over C. This is like a super awesome um, relationship here because it enabled us to quickly find uh, these angles. It's a lot less work too, um, other than the law of cosines, which is kind of a monstrosity in my opinion. But... Uh, between these two circles I have, notice how I have AA and B and B, or I had, in this case, CC and AA circled here. We only can have one unknown, okay? So between angle A, side A, angle C, and side C, we can only have one unknown. That's a quick recap. Go ahead and check out some of my other videos if you want a reminder. Um, but this video is uh, under the assumption that you already have some background information. Well, based on that, if I circle this, I have side A, angle A here, and I'm looking for this angle S. I have its opposite side, so I'm only missing one thing here. That means I can use the law of sines. So let's go ahead and set it up. I'm going to have sine of R over R. Okay, I'm just going to keep it in terms of the original letters. It's the same thing. The sine of S over S. Well, we know sine of R, sine of 118. We know... Uh, R, right here, see I change it to an R, is 32.977. I'm gonna leave it stored on my calculator, equals sine of S, that's a seven, over, what is that, 24? 24. So what happens here? From here, how do we solve this? We cross multiply and then we are going to divide to solve for S and we're gonna take the inverse at the end. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do 24 times sine of 118. That equals uh, 21.19 about, okay? And then I have sine of S times, shoot, running out of room. Okay, so I'm going to just leave it as 21.2 equals 32.9. You guys know that I'm leaving it uh, on my calculator fully, okay? I'm trying to solve for this guy, sine of S. So I need to divide both sides by 32.9. Again, I have the whole, the whole number stored on my calculator, 32.9. So I'm gonna take this 21.2 number and I'm gonna divide it by this 32.9 number, okay? And I get 0 0.64 about, I have the whole number on my calculator, equals sine of S. Now I just take the inverse sine of that, okay? To get the S by itself. Aha, uh -huh, got it. Okay, so I take the inverse sine of both sides. Let me go ahead and demonstrate that with this color. Inverse sine of both sides. And I get angle S equals, now it's by itself, 39.98. I think rounded to the nearest is what it wants, is S equals 40 degrees. So I think it's a much easier problem. Other than using law of cosines again, law of sines is so much easier. That's what I would recommend, okay? For these solve each triangle, you're going to do these same processes here, okay? So you're going to get an angle, okay? So let's say you solve for X here, and then you could either, you, I would just use law of sines from there, get that second angle, and then use the angle sums, that angle A plus angle B in a triangle plus angle C equals 180. That's what I'd go from there, 
Okay, so if you have these triangles, you're gonna do the same thing that you did for number eight. Then you're gonna use the law of sines, and then you can solve it from there. This one, you're gonna do the same thing we just did, and then you're gonna find the other angle after that using the angle sum. For these problems, uh, you just need to make sure you draw out the triangles appropriately. So you have STR, make sure you label everything in that order, and then label everything uh, after that. And I think, what is it looking for? Oh, it wants us to solve the triangle. So for this one, you have side, angle, side. I'd find this side first, and then you could use law of signs quickly from that, okay? So that, that's what I'm recommending to you guys. It just makes it a whole lot easier when you use the law of signs versus not using it. The last thing I wanna talk about, and I've been spending a lot of time on this video, but I wanna make sure I do enough thoroughly. It says find the area of each triangle to the nearest 10th. A couple different options. I would not recommend Heron's formula. There's an apostrophe there. It's just a lot to memorize and you're probably gonna forget some steps. Um, so I would just uh, encourage you to um, solve for what's needed to get a side angle side relationship. With the side angle side relationship right here, okay, that's a side, an angle in between and a side. Okay, so that would be the side, the, the side, and this would be the angle in between. We can use this equation, which is one half AB times sine of C. That's a great way to find the area of any triangle. Okay, it's equivalent is right there. And note that the variable labels are not as important as the relationship to each other, side, angle, side. So again, there's no A, B, or C here, but we just wanna make sure that we get a side, angle, side relationship. We have a side, we have an angle in between, and then we want this other side. So we don't have this other side, we need to find this other side. This is gonna be um, honestly a little bit annoying to find this side, but what I'm gonna do here is uh, I could use law of cosines. I don't think that's the best thing to do. I think the better thing to do, I'm trying to pick a color here that's not gonna annoy me, is to use law of sines. Anytime you have um, something like this going on where you can circle two of those pairs and there's only one missing value, in this case the missing value is right here, I would use law of si sines over law of cosines. Now for 21, you're gonna need law of cosines because you, you can't use law of sines. So that's just a reminder, but you guys, Number eight was just like this, so go ahead and use that for number eight. And then go ahead and plug in your values for the side angle side into that area equation. Let me just show you for this example how to use the law of sines twice. We have sine 45 over 11 is equal to sine k over seven. I'm gonna multiply sine of 45 times seven first, sine 45 times seven, okay? So I get 4.94. Again, that's stored in my calculator. That's not exactly what it says, but I'm just writing down the first two digits I see. Times sine of k, this is what we're after. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide that by 11. Divide by 11, it's already stored in my calculator. I get 0 0.45 about, this time I rounded a little bit, sine of k. In order to get it by itself, I need to take the inverse. So I take the inverse of both sides, I get K equals, hold on, I have to do it still. Okay, 26.74. And I'm gonna leave it as like as exact as possible, 26.74221. I'm gonna leave that many digits because I want a less chance for error because I still need to find this angle right here. Well, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do 180 minus the 26, blah, 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 minus 45, and that's gonna give me angle P, which equals, let's add this to 45, and then let's subtract this from 180, and I get this is equal to 108.2577. I'm being exact here because I wanna use law of signs again. Again, I think this is just an easier way to go. You might disagree, and leave a comment if you do, but I'm gonna circle uh, the original pair, this guy, and this time I'm gonna write it, sine 45 over 11 is sine of the 108 dot 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 over this missing side right here. This is the side we want. Well, actually, no, we don't need to do, I'm sorry, we could use our, uh, our area formula right from here. Because we have side, angle, side, we do not need to use law of sines again. So let me let me scratch that, but if you wanted better numbers, I guess you could do it again. But I'm gonna go right from here. 
sorry about that. I, I mean, I guess it's better to audible than stay uh, stuck in a, a bad mindset. So here, I when you go ahead straight to my area formula because I have a side angle side relationship. Didn't even see it. I do one half times my side seven times my other side 11 times sine of C, the angle in between, and that is sine of 108.25 about, okay? So now I just multiply this straight across. This is the easy part. That's why I like this formula, this way of doing it. Okay, times seven times 11 times 0.5, and I just multiply it all the way across, and I get my area equals 36.56 miles squared, and that's my answer. So that's all there is to it. Um, I hope this was a good summary of everything you need to know about area, um, law of cosines, law of sines. They really go well in tandem together. Uh, and you really can take on just about any triangle problem in this way as long as you have three measurements given. The best scenario is when it gives you two angles because you find the third side. But regardless, Scotty, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for requesting it. Make sure to request your own videos if you're watching this, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.